Hi everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. In this video, I'm going to take this spalted maple bowl blank and combine it with some purple diopside to make a really unique looking inlay. First thing we got to do is clean off the bottom of this bowl blank. It's got anchor seal on it, and then I want to put a waste block on the bottom of it. So there is a waste block that's been dipped in hot melt glue in an electric frying pan. And if you roughed out your bowls where they're one inch thickness for every 10 inches in diameter, you should be able to just eyeball that glue block and put it on the, the base of the bowl and then not have any issues trimming it up and having enough thickness. In this video, you're just going to see me using the 5 8 bowl gouge and the parting tool. Of course, you know, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to be a wood turner, you've got to master the gouge. The gouge is going to be your, your go-to tool when it comes to most turning applications. Uh, the carbide certainly has a place in my work, especially when it comes to dealing with resin. But, you know, the, the 5 8 bowl gouge is the tool for bowl turning, so you need to master that. As we watch this clip, you'll see me shut the lathe off quite a bit to look at the condition, the surface of the wood, and... I'm just doing some pull cuts and you'll see some push cuts dealing with some tear out. Uh, you can see those long ribbons. This is a freshly sharpened gouge, so there shouldn't really be any issues here. And um, the only problem is sometimes when you're working with spalted woods, because they've sat around maybe on the ground for a year or two, that you might be dealing with a little bit of dry rot. But other than that, it's it's usually pretty good. And for the most part, this surface is, is good. I will go back later on and do some shear scraping on the outside of this after the inside's taken out, but I'm quite happy with that. And now we're going to flatten the rim and then of course move to the inside of the bowl. I should also mention that this is a commission for Darren and uh, so Darren buys a bowl from me every year and right around this time of year and uh at this moment i'm sold out so you know he's he's been a good customer over the years so you know i'm going to try and get something made for him and that's what this is and so i'm just going to keep on hogging out material here there's there, these cuts aren't exactly the uh, very pretty i'm, I'm kind of in get her done mode because i'm still shooting friday's video <laughs> so uh but you know it's important for me to you know take care of my loyal customers that have been with me for many years and and Darren certainly fits in that category. I thought that I would leave that in there. Uh, that will give you a sense of speed at which I'm going. I know that when these when the footage is sped up on these these videos, that it's hard to really get that sense. But you know that gives, should gives you an idea. And I mean, we're getting there. It's not it's not ready yet, but for the most part, it's not too bad.
on with sanding. These are the three and a half inch dipple discs from sandpaper.ca. And in that previous clip, working in the belly of the bowl, that's again one of the tough places for most wood turners, including myself, to get right. So, you know, a lot of times you'll spend you know, half of your time turning when you're turning the inside of a bowl in that area. So, you know, if you if you if you struggle in that area, don't worry, you are certainly not alone. Now, the heart wood on this piece wasn't exactly the best, so I saturated it with the thin CA glue from Starbond. So that's what you're looking at there. So I sand it to 180, then saturated it with the glue, and now. I'm just cleaning that up and then eventually I'll turn the lathe on and blend it all in. And that really stabilizes those, those hearts that are in those trees that really aren't in the best of shape. Like I said earlier, we're going to be doing an inlay in the rim of this piece and there's a small little knot we're going to be filling in well as well. So just parting in that area and then some fine sanding before finish. All right, so this week we're going to be using the Waterlux Medium Sheen, and that is the original VOC. I want to make sure that I get the Waterlux down on the groove here, so I'm just going to pour a bunch of it in. That's why I've taken it off the lathe. That's way it's it's just really hard to put on. I used to keep all this water lux or not all the previous finishes that I used to use in squirt balls. You can squirt it in there easy enough, but uh, now that I've switched to stop loss bags, I find it's it's hard to do that. So uh, I figure that this is probably the best way to do this. And dealing with these spalted woods, they typically will suck up a lot of finish. Uh, in this video, I actually put four coats of the Waterlux on there, which I rarely have to do. All right, well, you know, this is another character piece. Lots of spalting in this. Especially on the back side. Good character bowl. So once the uh, finish hardens up, we'll put the inlay in tomorrow. And of course that's on there so that if we get any spillover that it doesn't stain the end grain on this beautiful maple bowl. See you tomorrow. So this stuff is very, well it's not similar to the alabaster, but the way that you get the inlay material is similar. Now, I'm hoping the camera is going to pick this up. But See how it's crystals? Now I don't know a ton about this. Uh, I got this from a friend of mine and you can see other material embedded in it. And he said they cleaned it with an acid, soaked it in an acid in it. That's why there's all these little voids because whatever was in there, this acid ate that away. And I don't know if that's the material that's left behind from it or not. But uh, anyway, I'll try and pick this material out of there because I certainly don't want that in our in inlay. We only want this purpley stuff. And, you know, I'm not going to crush it up. You're not going to see me really hammering it down to make it into a powder because I want these crystals to remain. So the only way that they're going to remain is if you just kind of hit it lightly. I am going to take it down into a smaller material, but I'm not going to really kind of grind it up like I would the soapstone and the alabaster. So all you need is a steel plate, hammer, four inch conduit to keep the stuff from flying all over the place when you hit it, and a sieve with a sixteenth of an inch opening in it. And that's it. Yeah, a lot of that material is way embedded down inside of it. so. Might have to lose a lot of this getting it. But it, you know, it, it comes apart quite easily. So 
So there's going to be some people say, well, can you use that as an, as an inlay? And I'm like, yeah, I suppose you could. But, I mean, this stuff is really kind of muddy looking. And once you put anything clear on top of it, it's probably going to disappear anyway. So, you know, um, I wouldn't use it, but I'm sure some would. And I did have better examples of this, but of course I've used them over the years. And uh, so now we're down to maybe not the stuff that isn't exactly the best. So that's why I've got to pick through it and get rid of this stuff. Yeah, big chunks like that are not going to look good. There's some more examples of it. There's a good clean example. The first batch that I got looked mostly like that. All right, so finally we're gonna do the inlay. <laughs> so that's our good material. This stuff here, parts of it are no good. That's okay, I think. So, you know, again, I'm hoping that the camera is going to be able to pick that up, but you can see kind of crystals in there. So anyway, I'm just going to keep doing this until I've got the material basically all down to this size, and I'll bring it back. Now, we do have a hole to fill right here, and unfortunately, I don't have my new UV flashlight, so we'll see how this goes. Just going to put a little bit of duct tape over this just to hold the resin in there. And this is what we're going to be using. It's the UV resin from Designer Epoxy. So what I'm going to do is put just a little bit down inside and then put some of the dye upside down inside and fill it up to the surface. I do not want this to come above the surface because uh, this stuff is pretty much impossible to sand. So I'm going to try and keep it below the surface. It's fine if the resin's on the top, we'll be able to sand that away, but that's what I'm going to try and do here. Just need something to poke that down with. This is a black light. So, you know, this is going to cure this, but it's just going to take a while to do it. So, probably a couple of minutes on this side. Then I'll flip it over and take the tape off the outside, and uh, we'll do it there as well. So that is the inside one, and it's rock hard. Hard to see. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's have a look on the outside here. I do have a UV flashlight on the way. It's just not here yet. Yeah, and I'll hold this on here for a couple of minutes, and hopefully... That's set all the way through here. Uh, it's about maybe five eighths of an inch. So I don't know. It's kind of iffy, but hopefully it goes all the way through. It solidifies. All right, that's been two minutes. All right, let's do the inlay in the top. So you'll see that I don't actually have the inlay coming to the very top. I'm leaving quite a bit of room so that I can set the resin in and not have it overflow into the bowl. 
Let's mix up some resin. Still got a little bit left. This is Designer Epoxy's Art Cast, and this is a good choice for this because it's crystal clear and overnight it will set up and then we'll be able to carry on with the project in the morning. I also warmed up some water because it's cold in the workshop just to make the resin flow well. All right, so this is in the pressure pot. It's been leveled and I'm going to use a syringe and just kind of put it in here till it gets all the way to the top and then you know that'll be it. I'll throw the lid on and we'll throw some pressure in it. I will pressurize this very slowly so that we don't have any uh, mishaps because if you push the air in too fast it can get into the resin and spray it everywhere. I'll just give that a couple of minutes. I'll burn off any bubbles before I close it up. And just to make sure to see if the resin level is going to drop off, it probably is going to take a little bit of time for it to go down through that inlay. So, um, yeah, it's just something you need to watch out for if you're going to do this. All right, I don't think it's going to take any more than that. It is the next day, and uh, it's dished out a little bit, but it's nice and cured up and ready to be finished. To cut the wood in the resin back, I decided to just stick with the gouge. It seemed to be cutting well, so hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I sand at the top inlay from 60 to 800 and then the bowl from 60 to 320 initially and I just figured that it was a good opportunity to do some buffing on the very top of that just to make it crystal clear and the last thing is just to sand back that UV resin where I filled in that little knot hole so that's what I'm doing here now and then I sand at the rest of the piece to 320. All right, this is the second coat of Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. Well, I know it's a little hard to see, but it is certainly purple. Camera's not really doing it any justice. It's a beautiful little bowl. It's a little out of oval from sitting in the heat overnight, which is kind of the norm for this time of year. And the inlay on the side is right there. And again, a little hard to see here, but there it is on the inside. All right, see you tomorrow for the second coat, or I guess for the third. Same process that you see me use each week, buffing with the Tripoli buffing compound from the BL buffing system, and then cleaning the surface with denatured alcohol. Good morning, people. This is the third coat of Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. All right, well, there's your third coat. Uh, it is going to require another coat. Technically, this is really the second coat. Anytime you're dealing with spalted woods, uh, they're probably going to absorb more finish than other solid woods and I shouldn't say solid but woods that have spalting in them sometimes are a little on the dry rot side just depends on the wood a 
really nice spalting in this piece. And along there. And I know it's just really hard to see the inlay. But trust me, it is purple. Purpley. All right, I'll do the third or fourth one the same way, and then we'll see you when we're doing the bottoms. Or the bottom. Just before I part this piece off of the waste block, I want to just clue, move away that excess glue. And this is the 3 16 inch parting tool from Crown. And just use a saw to cut it free. Now you can try and break it off there. And if you've got a really thick base, it's probably not a problem. But, you know, if you're getting a little thin on the bottom, if you try to basically break that off the glue block, you run the risk of pulling the bottom of your bowl. So don't do that. And the bottom was sanded to 320. And uh, all right, well, that's it. Let's have a last little chat about this project. All right, well, so that's it for the video. Uh, these videos that are through the week, I try, I want to really kind of make them not, not as long as my usual videos are. Uh, this bowl has got a ton of character in it. And we'll try and show that so that the, uh, the lights aren't washing it out. Lots of spalting in this piece. More of it in there. I'm going to try and show this purple diopside off, but I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Hopefully when I put the rotating videos up at the end, you'll be able to get a better look at it. I do prefer to use the resin for an inlay method like this. One where you're trying to um, keep the inlay material below the resin. Uh, it's a real clean look. There's not any bubbles in this, you know, and that's a couple of reasons for that. Of course, because you sealed it before you put the inlay in. And then, of course, in the pressure pot, it's going to condense any of those bubbles if they do come out and then hopefully you don't see them at all so that's my preferred method and this stuff is uh is uh six on the hardness scale so that's a very very difficult material to work with uh it will just eat up sandpaper like there's no tomorrow so that's another reason why it's important to leave it below the surface so that that resin can can cover it and just sand the resin because if you have to sand this material back trust me it's not going to be any fun at all uh spalted pieces of wood definitely definitely will take more coats of finish uh this one took four in total if i was doing this with hard maple you might be able to get away with two or oak two maybe so you know this is going to really absorb a lot of that material and and i know that the first one we sanded off but it still should some of it still should have been embedded in in the the pores of the wood itself but that just shows you how much um, finish that spalted woods will eat up there's the very bottom as you can see i don't have uh any finish on there yet because uh well this is supposed to be a quick video um so this this bowl number is two two three two zero one now i looked in my book uh we're coming up on the fifth i think it is of december for the fifth and uh to date i've only made 75 bowls this year so that kind of shows you how making and producing these these uh these videos really kills your production so typically you know it would be three to four hundred bowls a year and then a whole bunch of cutting boards on top of that for my business prior to coming here on youtube so that really shows you how long it takes to, to shoot these videos and it just it's just a production killer it really is and so you know if you've got 75 projects that were made and registered then you know 52 of them are, are going to be YouTube videos so that that shows you how much I've been able to accomplish besides doing YouTube videos but I love abs absolutely love making these videos and I'm going to be here so hopefully you guys enjoy them and uh, thank you for your support I really appreciate it all right so on Friday there'll be a, my normal upload on Friday and so far it's looking absolutely amazing so please come on back for that uh, I should mention that this piece ended up being 11 and three quarters by four and a quarter high 
and it's an absolutely beautiful bowl. I really, really like uh, spalted woods, and this is certainly in that category. All right, well, that's it. Uh, don't forget to put designer epoxy all by itself in the comments down below to be entered into the three gallon giveaway kit at 80,000. So by the time this airs, I don't know, we might be at 78,000, so we're getting there. And of course, uh, please come on back for Friday's upload. All right, well, that's it. Take care, stay safe. Please share my videos with your friends. And don't forget that I have Instagram and my business Facebook as well. So please check those out. See you Friday.